This is your home for St. Cloud State Hockey, keeping you up to date on the NCHC. One-timer coming, they score! Ripped in! A bomb from Perfects! Women's WCHA. So Dana Rasmussen fires and she scores! Dana Rasmussen for the Huskies. The National Hockey League. Dwayne Kaprizov in for a chance to win it! He scores! And everything from the state of hockey. St. Cloud Cathedral is now 42.6 seconds away from wrapping up the school's first ever title. Welcome to the Huskies Warming House Podcast Den. Welcome into the Healthy Scratch interview segment for episode number 66, Route 66, right on down the Huskies Warming House podcast highway. Did I just think of that right now in my head? I certainly did. But uh, someone who didn't help me out with that, but did help me out quite a bit in this interview is my co-host joining me here, Nick Max. And Nick, we had an interesting guest that um, we actually didn't really know a whole lot about, uh, offered him a place on the show. And uh, I would say it was a pretty good time, all things considered, wouldn't you? Yeah, first of all, Route 66, you've got kind of like that Albert Einstein mad scientist hairdo going. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you have like a, a shock, like, you know, wave magnetic field that's happening? Yeah. And that's how you're coming up with this e clever MC stuff. squared, mofos. Got it, right. So, uh, on that note, uh, no, no, uh, Travis, a really, really cool dude, actually. Um, a lot of uh, deep husky roots uh, as a fan and uh, also some really, really good stories. And, you know, honestly, probably could have a part two with him. There's a lot of Very different things so. we talked uh, before the show that didn't kind of make it on the show. Uh, but, uh, you know, just again, the knowledge and the experiences that he's had uh, throughout the program and seeing uh, some of the good and maybe also some of the bad, a uh, lot of interesting takes and uh, also some really cool interactions with uh, either some broadcasters or some players at the time it was really, really fun to, to see and hear from his perspective. So overall, a really, really good interview. I thought, you know, I th it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Like you mentioned, a part two is definitely going to be coming for sure. Caleb Peabody, Go Huskies, we're definitely going to have to make a reappearance at some point in, in the future. It'd be nice to kind of have like a little round table with this, guys. But it was uh, Travis Weldon all by himself flying solo here. And we won't keep you waiting for episode number 66. to the Den Husky Warming House podcast fans to episode number 66 and the Healthy Scratch interview. And joining us this week is St. Cloud State fan extraordinaire, possible ref. I'm not sure. It depends on what I see in the background, but uh, uh, Trevor, man, thanks for joining us. Uh, uh, coming in and shut up. Okay. Travis. His name is Travis. We talked about this. We go. Keep rolling. We go it's with all it. Right. We go with it. Yes, but like you mentioned, Travis Weldon, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, and I got to say, you are recommended from Go Huskies Wu himself, who currently holds the record for the most views on this show. Ooh, uh, those are some big shoes to fill. How do you feel about that? I, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to do his numbers. I mean, let's face it. He, he's got uh, <laughs> he's got the cachet. He's got uh, he, he's got the uh, he's got the fingers of the pulse of the Husky Nation. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do what I can. I, um, I'll try to be entertaining. Maybe I'll, uh, but that's, uh, that's uh, big shoes to fill. So we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. He's off to a good start. I should say, mm -hmm. uh, Travis. Yes. Thank you. Um, cause you're, it looks like you've got some victory drinks already going. Uh, can you share with us what's, uh, what you got going on there? Yes. Um, actually this is a little bit of a shout out to, um, a podcast I used to do, um, uh, a couple years ago, actually the last podcast that me and SCSU traveling fan, um, Andrew, uh, we used to do. And he, um, uh, he ended up moving out, uh, moving out West. This was before, you know, working home and all the zoom, uh, whatnot. So we didn't, um, really have the ability to kind of continue that. But our last podcast was when, uh, Motsman decided to jump ship. Um, so we, uh, used to always have, um, having a drink of the opponent that we were talking about, you know, so usually it was craft beer. Uh, so like if we were playing, you know, in, you know, against Western Michigan that week, we would have some kind of craft beer from the Western Michigan area, Denver, Den you know, and so on and so forth. And then 
you know, if it's something like North Dakota where nobody wants to drink it, then, you know, we just kind of do whatever. It's a wild card. <laughs> and a little bit of shout out to, uh, to Whiskey Dave also for this. So this is uh, Brother Justice Whiskey that's uh, in, in uh, Minneapolis. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. So. No, no Northland vodka. Mark Parrish should be disappointed. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I can't do vodka anymore. <laughs> and I think that stems from, I mean, our dearly departed press um, and that, <laughs> um, you know, those uh, stairs going up and down, it, it was a nasty fall. So, so I'll just kind of. Oh, oh, so, so, so would that be called a literal hot take at this point? Which, which part? Well, the part uh, about the press, it's a literal hot take at this point, it's, right? It's, ah, it's, there we go. I think, it. it's a, I think it's a smoldering take, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the rubble. Of, the so. rubble. Those stairs were quite interesting. The press, you had two sets. had one uh, to the right when you first walked in and uh, you know, one to the left side. I think what drove me nuts about both sets of staircases it was, how could you fit one person up the stairs? They were so narrow. Nonetheless, when you have people trying to go opposite ways up the stairs, it was, you know, if you're trying to meet somebody, you know, a pretty good way to do so, just maybe not the most appropriate. Yeah, way. exactly. Bumping into each it, other and spilling drinks. It just wasn't be a lawsuit. Uh, yeah. It was, I mean, it had to have been, it had to have been a 70 degree angle. Like it was yeah. like climbing a ladder up those steps. And obviously after you had a few. Whew, and, Oof. I was gonna say I don't I don't know that I can handle stairs normally to be honest with you. I uh, the one question I have for you, Travis, to, to start off here is again you are recommended by Go Huskies Woo, but you know some people know you, some people don't. You're at more clappers on Twitter. I uh, you know what 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 is kind of your day job? What do you keep up with? You know who is uh, Travis Weldon in in the daily sphere? In the daily sphere, um, I work here at Take Cloud uh, at a finance company and. Um... Yeah, I, I, I do what I can to try to get uh, Friday nights off uh, that I'm able to go uh, to go at least watch the games. Um, and uh, yeah, so graduated um, in 08, went to college from 03 to 08 there at St. Cloud. Um, but my Huskies fandom really kind of started um, in 2000. Um, the first uh, Final Five. So um, the first Final Five that I went to um, was the, actually the last year it was at the Target Center before it moved to the XL while it was being built. And um, uh, yeah, so it was actually my birthday present from my dad. And it was kind of, you know, I was never a big hunter, never a big fisher and whatnot. So it was kind of our father-son bonding trip was going to the final five. Um, so we so we started that, um, you know, I was 16 um, going to that and then, you know, just kind of continued on and we've gone every year, um, up until this last year. And, um, you know, I'd like to blame it on COVID for ending that tradition and whatnot, but in actuality, I had, I had twins <laughs> and this year, even, <laughs> even with, you know, I, 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 I love my wife and, uh, the, the burden that would put on her would not be fair. So, so obviously, you know, uh, 2021, um, when the Huskies, um, won and, you know, we had, uh, my dad and I had, you know, tickets kind of in the bottom corner and yeah, we had that tickets, um, um, all the way through. So it was, you know, um, you know, it's kind of our, our, our bonding trip and, you know, we, we we've got hockey and, um, and, and, and whatnot. So it's been, uh, it, it's been a heck of a ride, uh, you know, started at uh, St. Cloud State in uh, in 03, went and um, I was uh, the ref in the stands. So that's that's the uh, the ref outfit right there. Um, pretty much didn't didn't miss a home game uh, for a um, you know a good stretch of, from from those years. Um, you know, in the mid aughts, you know, some some really good years, some really down years, but you know, it was it was just so much fun. You know, even even in you know some of those lean years, it was it was it was, it was a lot of fun, and we still. Had, still great players and still great stories and whatnot so yeah it was yeah uh, good and i try to get to as many games as i can um now just with the hospital and bustle so travis uh with the covid year that we just had obviously nobody was really able to see uh what ended up being quite the historical run here for the husky squad uh so i know the gophers have announced officially that they will have full attendance for next season. I don't believe St. Cloud has officially made that announcement, although all, all signs are pointing toward that way. Uh, with the loss of one year as a fan, are you looking to try to get back to the herb to see what could be another contending year for this Husky squad? Oh, definitely. Um, there's, 
there, there's so much excitement, I think, right now buzzing around it. And I, I hope the fans um, will kind of resonate with that and um, really come back to uh, uh, to the herb. And it's so it's so tough right now. I mean, it, we, we can sit and blame conference realignments all we want. But, you know, in... I, I think just the crux of it thing is just we just have so many so many entertainment options and so many entertainment you know ways to spend your entertainment dollars and you know live sports just in general have kind of kind of gone by the wayside. Um, I think obviously it can coincide with um, you know the big uh, shift from you know WCHA and CHC and whatnot. Um, but I, I think it, I personally think in that just sped it up. I think we were going to get around to this place eventually, just to, just, just with all of everything that we can do now with our team dogs. So that that's just my my thought about it. Yeah. So speaking of kind of the, the state of college hockey, right? And this is a common question that we've had on our show. You know, where is college hockey today? Is there? It's an interesting take that that, that you have there, um, and I'm inclined to actually agree with it quite a bit. Where it does speed up that process a little bit. In a weird way, do you think that it was almost, I don't want to say cathartic, but almost fitting that the old WCHA was kind of disbanded instead of having it slowly dwindle and die out to where we had this kind of abrupt end and then we built from the ground up the NCHC to become one of these this successful conference? And then on top of that, you know, what is the state of college hockey today in your opinion? Are we in a good spot or do we still have, you know, more work to do? We still have a lot of work to do. Um, and I, I think right now we're in a spot where every institution, and you can argue rightly or wrongly, is just looking out for their own best interest and not for the interest in college hockey at heart. If we did, we would still focus on growing the game. I am a huge believer of growing the game and not just college hockey, but all hockey in general. You know, with all the rule changes that are going in, making it hard, you know, all these reviews that are going in, making it harder to score goals or goals to count. If you're a new fan trying to get involved, it's exhausting. It's so tough because you have to think, why, wait, why, why was that not a goal? That looked like a good goal. Oh, you see like, you know, 20 seconds earlier, you see this sliver of white right here. That's why that was a goal. <laughs> And it's like, wait, that's why, or any goaltender interference that was a little bit of a bump, you know, you know, obviously, you know, we got Nick here in the, in the Vegas, you know, flurry was uh, the master of that during the wild series, you know, <laughs> able to just, and it's, it, it's tough. And I think actually baseball is kind of, you know, going down the same route now with, you know, all of that sticky, sticky substance. Now and you had that whole um, uh, beef, obviously, um, you know, that was just kind of making the rounds and whatnot. And it's like, we, we can't make it harder for new fans to enjoy the game. Cause I think not only do I love hockey, but I think college hockey is its most pure and it's most fun. I'm not a huge fan of fighting. So maybe that's probably why, but you still get the physicality and you still get the scrums and you still get that. You still have that outlet. And I just think it's, it's just worrisome that, that we're not doing enough as a whole to grow the game and expand. And obviously with Huntsville, um, you know, going, going that route, but you know, that's some programs are withering dying. Some now programs are coming up and sprouting. So it, it, it's an interesting kind of period. And, you know, I, I think if there was a way to do it where, you know, we could have some of these other programs that aren't, in a home or in a conference and, you know, have, have a place for them. That is also with, you know, some of the big names as well. You know, we, we, we created, you know, the super conference and everyone likes to stroke our own ego about how we're the best conference and whatnot, but I don't, I, you know, that's, that's the best for our institutional schools. And I agree with that. Is that the best for college hockey as a whole? I don't know. Is that our institution? Is that our place to say, I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't have, I don't have Heather's job, obviously. And I don't, you know, I, I, I don't have to ride that, 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 that worry. And that's, that's where we're kind of at this kind of weird focal point where, you know, I'm, I'm happy that St. Cloud is in the area where it is um, and, and, and whatnot. Um, so I, I guess maybe 
I don't know, maybe I should just shut up and be thankful <laughs> that, that we're at the spot right now. But I don't know, that that's just kind of what I worry about. You know, I, I'm a huge proponent of growing the game and getting people involved and making things more complicated by ticky tack stuff is you can't make it confusing for new people. So that that's where it comes down to. Confusing is one, because you're absolutely right with, you know, the different video reviews and what can be reviewed. Uh, no question in the last five years that has been <laughs> absolutely nuts. But I want to go back to uh, your point about growing the game, because we're starting to see a little bit of a new a new trend, whereas we're seeing a lot of these Division three schools start to climb up to Division one. You have St. Thomas come into the fold this season. South Dakota, I believe, has just announced in the next Augustana. couple of years. Yep. Augustana uh, starting to go from D3 to D1, so already established programs that are making the leap to division one. And I don't, I don't know if you agree with this, Travis, I kind of think it is, this is going to be where the growth of the game, I think is going to really come from. I, I think it's hard to, to grow the game in, in terms of a school breaking ground and a new, and a new program break to division one, because I mean, along with the rules and, and everything else, the cost of hockey is just astronomical. And I think that's a big part of it as well. But, you know, for example, uh, U, uh, UW river falls, a very, very prestigious uh, division three program. Um, you know, who is to say a program like that couldn't go to D one and a ton of small Wisconsin schools. I think honestly, that's where the next step is for college hockey to grow. I'm not sure what your take would be on that. And division three schools going D one. Yeah. Well, and that's, I mean, that was the big thing with even St. Cloud when we made the jump, um, you know, when her Brooks had the whole idea and brought that to the forefront is, and it was insane. And I mean, it was like, how are you even going to compete? This is, you know, you, you've got, you know, the, the mighty gophers snatching up everyone. And then all the, obviously you've got the iron range kids that want to go over to Duluth and whatnot. And it's like, you're going to be a laughing stock. And in, in the end, Herb, Herb was right. You know, you widen the base, you widen the summit, you know, and that's, that's the important thing that it comes to and giving more opportunities. And that's where, you know, St. Cloud State, you know, when, when, they, when they made the jump and, and it's that, that I agree, that's where the growth has come from. And it's sad that other schools are going to have to die to do that. Um, and, but, you know, it's just, I just hope there's a plan somewhere in place to, that they're going to have, you know, a home for them. Cause I mean, I don't, I don't see Augustana getting in the NCHC, you know? So, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of thing. And again, is, is that our job to help schools are wrong? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but it's it, that, that, that's something that I'm kind of looking at, kind of looking, um, you know, it, it's, it's exciting to see new programs kind of rise up. And I think in the Midwest, especially, I mean, Illinois, I know, Always, there's always rumors about Illinois going, but I mean, that's ripe for a hockey school in general, because there's a lot of hockey talent coming out of Illinois lately, especially after, you know, uh, the Blackhawks have had that su success because they've got new eyes on, um, on, on hockey in general and whatnot. And so, I mean, if that, and Nick, I think, you know, to your point about how expensive it is, you know, a lot of that expense is the travel and if we have more local teams, you know, um, available to where we can, you know, have those bus trips like they can do out on the East coast, you know, that's going to be, um, a key factor. And, you know, Bob, you know, I think go Huskies blue also talked about this too. Um, you know, Bob Motsko, you know, he's going to keep that, those rivalries. He knows how important it is to have, you know, the big schools play the small schools. And I know like Wisconsin didn't have that <laughs> mentality. You know, they, they only wanted to play kind of on, on their terms or, or whatnot. It's like, well, everyone wants to play us. So you can, I got my own feelings about Wisconsin, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, so I, I just, I, I hope there's just a grand play, uh, plan in, in effect to have um, those, um, uh, those programs kind of, kind of grow and thrive. So. Yeah. It's, it's been a challenge too. And I think, you know, when you talk about teams like Alabama Huntsville, it's also, that proximity piece how do you how do you start to build that non-traditional market can you get a couple mm -hmm. teams down in florida or tennessee or you know down in nashville or something like that so it'll be an it'll be an interesting transition i think uh two points that you had kind of made earlier and i'm going to kind of double up on the question here um i'll start with the first one i uh, you mentioned talking about simplifying the game and it's an interesting point that i think uh we haven't really talked about that much on the show but we've talked about quite a bit off the air as hockey players is that I think we're all in agreement that 
you should be able to kick the puck or high stick the puck into the net. Um, I, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, I mean, do you think that players should be able to do that? Do you foresee some issues? Cause I think the biggest question for kicking and high sticking is the safety piece of mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah. But do you think that there should be a push to change those rules uh, similar to the long awaited offside change? Yeah. And, and my big thing, especially with high sticking is so arbitrary. You know, and it's like, it has to be above, you know, if it's above the crossbar and it's like, you never have a good camera angle. <laughs> so then you're looking at it for five minutes, deciphering this grainy, you know, 480p footage of trying to <laughs> see if it's above, you know, and so it's just blurry, like scrambled porn in the nineties and you're trying to get it. And it's like, you can't, you can't figure it out. And you're trying to make a decision on that. Um, and well, it's like, well, well, now we knew what you were doing in the nineties, but continue. <laughs> I hope my, I hope my parents aren't watching. Um, so it's, but you know, it, it's just, it, 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 I don't like any rules that take away skill from the game. And in the end, that's hand-eye coordination and whatnot. And there's already a penalty if you end up hitting somebody in the face. So, I mean, <laughs> You know, if it doesn't hit anybody in the face, but it can gain you an advantage and you've got the anti coordination to do it, I think it should be allowed. And especially on goals where you can't really tell if it's above or not. Um, you know, my whole thing with reviews especially is, I mean, if you can't tell within the first 10 seconds, it's a, believe it. I mean, you can't go looking for a reason to wave off a goal. And that's just, you know, and, and trying to decipher things in slow motion with a game as fast as hockey, it's just, I, I, I think we're just treading our wheels at that point. And then we, we just end at the end, nobody's happy with it. And then everybody gets frustrated. Then you're turning new fans off. And so, I mean, maybe that's my huge slippery slope, you know, go, but it's, I don't know. That that's kind of how I think about it, especially with reviews. Um, it's like, if you can't tell right away, you know, it should be blatant and obvious offsides. Like it should be a clear advantage um, like Duchesne you know, when it was, you know, two feet past the blue line. But if it's, you know, a quarter of an inch and you can't tell because, you know, the quality of the footage or the skate was just a little bit off the eye, it's just, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, I definitely agree. My follow-up question, and this is one that we've discussed in the show quite extensively along with a lot of other people, and you kind of mentioned it too, is that, you know, you aren't the biggest fan of fighting. And, and I think that, you know, Nick and I would agree with that to a point. I mean, it's not like, you know, it doesn't have to be like the 90s where we're having bench balls and, you know, the games take four hours. Um, I guess we talked about still believing that fighting still has a place, at least in professional hockey, not so much in college hockey, but in the professional realm. Are are you still someone who believes that there is a time and a place for a fight? Or do you feel like, are, are you on the on the bandwagon that it's that it's overrated and doesn't need to be in the game? I more and more I'm thinking it's just overrated and it just doesn't need to be. It's it, the more that I, I watch fights, especially fights now off stage, how much of a platform you got designated players, you're you're taking up roster spots of skill players of people that are just there to enforce, and you know the whole aspect of oh they're trying to you know police the game on their own or anything like that. I think that's just all thrown out the 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 window when you have you know uh, Tom Wilson. You know, how he's able to get away with everything that he does and nobody's policing him. So already that argument is just out out the window. Um, And that's not why I watch hockey. And if you're going to get new fans, I think more and more fans are actually turned off by fighting. And then you get more and more talk about CTE and more and more studies come out. It's just in the end, it's just not worth it, you know but you still have the scrums and that's, you know, you can still have the scrums in the roughing and that's where college hockey, I think, you know, you still get that outlet, um, but you don't need to actually drop the gloves and whatnot. That's, that's my thought. Now on the contrary, you know, we talked before the show about the baseball issue with the sticky substances. Uh, There's been a lot of discussion uh, this Stanley cup playoff season about the uh, change in officiating, or should we say the lack of consistency from the regular season to the playoffs? I think anybody who has followed the game for at least five years, there's that kind of that unwritten code that says, you know, things change in the playoffs. However, this year it's been different. It's been a lot worse. And when you talk about, Mm -hmm 
the fights and you talk about the scrums, it's all interlinked. If you follow yeah. the game, it's all interlinked. So, you know, I guess, can, can we, can we say, does officiating have a part of this where, you know, as you mentioned, you know, are, does that force a coach's change to put person on the lineup that, uh, you know, to give him that beefier front line, because he's got to protect some skill guys that are getting hacked and whack, um, you know, behind the referee's eyes or right in front of them when they're not calling it per se. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's all cyclical. I'm not sure if you agree with that uh, synopsis or not. It's, I think it's to the point where, yeah, something needs to be changed with the officiating and, and whatnot, where they just need to call those, th- those things, no matter no matter the time and place, you know, even they, they try to say they, they try to stay out of the game or not affect the game. But when you not call seven cross checks to the lower back, you're still affecting the game. And, and, and that's, you know, if you just even call the book, how it's written, I mean, it, you know, eventually the players are going to have to adjust. And I'm sorry to the, um, you know, to the goons that are going to be, you know, making just under a million dollars a year, but it's, I, I, you know, it's more than you and I a, make <laughs> learn, learn to put the puck in the net if you want to survive. So I don't know. That's, that's my thought about it. And, you know, and, you know, I was an official for one year, you know, and obviously it was the uh, sports and PVs and whatnot. It's tough. Oh, yeah. Um, and you get, no matter what, you don't do a good job. You get abused by verbally abused all the time by the parents. It's good money. Um, and you know, it kept me in shape when, you know, I, you know, was in college. So I don't guess what I was doing. Um, but it's, um, it, that it's, you know, it's tough to do and being consistency, I think is just key, but you know, when something was a penalty at, you know, 10 minutes into the first period and it's not a penalty two minutes left in the third, just because of the time, I don't, you know, you're, you're still affecting the game. Um, and, and that's, uh, that, that, that's just kind of how I see it. So. And then just a quick follow up on this too. It actually, and you talk about consistency, it's even more widespread even between college hockey and say junior hockey, especially the CHL up in Canada, I had a couple uh, uh, of opportunities to watch Connor McDavid uh, in 2015 with the Erie Otters playing in the first run against the Sarnia Sting. And, you know, it, when you talk about the rule book and how it was called, there were full blown fights and some pretty pretty darn bad hits um, yeah. in the OHL. And, you know, and so here's, here's what's weird, right? Is that you have, kids in college hockey, you have kids in the CHL and junior hockey, and they're all have the same goal. They're trying to get to the NHL college hockey says no fighting. If you do your suspended, you got all this horrible stuff in the OHL. It's essentially the NHL playbook and rule book. It's a five minute major. It's no, you know, misconduct mm-hmm. unless there's intent to injure, so to speak. So, you know, it does, do you think that these leagues, these, these, these smaller leagues, you could say also need to get together and have the same rule book. And I would argue yes, because again, if you have players from college hockey that are used to like not having to be physically engaged and they go up to the NHL level, folks in the OHL, they're used to what they're ready to go. That's a problem for some of these college hockey players. I think it just comes back to what are we trying to do? And, you know, if we're trying to, to build the game now on, on, on speed and, scoring and, 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 and whatnot. It's just that I, I, I just don't think that the, the fighting or that type of style, I, I think it's really just, I, I just don't think it's needed anymore. Um, so, uh, and I know, you know, obviously, you know, USHL and, you know, the different USA hockey tiers or what, you know, they all have different rule books too. And, you know, we've got a full face mask here in ours, but I don't, I don't know. I just, you know, it's, it, it's different styles. You know, you've got, you know, CHL where you can come in when you're 15, 16 um, playing and they've got a cap at 20. And then obviously, you know, you've got the college hockey route um, where it's a little bit different. So it's, you know, you know, it's probably just different strokes for different folks. Um, but it's, you know, I think more and more we're doing a better job of educating um, Canadian hockey talent about, the benefits of of college hockey and i think if we continue to do that and continue to focus on maybe even the health aspect or whatnot i think it's a good a good direction if we keep going down that road um and i know a lot of the diehard hockey fans are probably not going to like that take but that's what i got it's interesting you know and it's like um so like 
I guess from my perspective, I like agree with you and disagree with you just because like as a player, well, I, I hate not- you. Yeah. So <laughs> boom, cancel culture. Cancel, hashtag cancel Noah. <laughs> See ya. I'm, I'm surprised it took this long, honestly. Um, you know, it's interesting. Like when I was a player, though, I remember the, my first college game and I got hit from behind actually my first college game. And before I even turned around to stand back up, my teammate was in there and, you know, he was, you know, fighting the guy that hit me from behind. And it's kind of like, it's almost like, I don't know if I want to see it go away completely, but I, but I think that there, it's more about like, is it warranted by the situation versus is it Ryan Reeves fighting somebody because he's Ryan Reeves and that's what he does. You know what I mean? Like, it's almost like, is it organic or is it? And, and, and that's yeah. the thing is, is, is then you get to the point where, okay, you have to answer for that. Right. So then yeah. it's a stage fight, you know, and it, it could be next shift or it, it could be the next period or it could be the next game it could be next season. You know, you have to answer for that hit. And, and, and then it's that stage fight where you just drop the gloves, right? When, and it's like, come on, let's just start the game. Like, but you know, like when your point, when you get checked from behind, there's still that scrum and you still can get your licks in that way. Um, and I think that's still a fair, you know, and maybe that's me trying to, you know, cake and eat it too and whatnot. But, you know, I think there's still that difference that you can have in hockey. And I think college hockey overall does a pretty good job of that. Yeah. So you're saying we're not going to see Brett Larson versus Bob Motzko anytime soon. Drop the gloves. That's not a lot of hair in that. Fight, I'll tell you that. <laughs> be I mean, I, I could say that as I have a hat on and no hair, <laughs> but uh, that'd be a good one. I, I remember when I was officiating, I once had a coach run on the ice towards me and I was like, yeah, well, you're gone. Clearly that's yeah. just, you can't, you can't do that. Um, yeah. It was weird. It, the, the kid um, came down and he scored and it was one of those nets that doesn't have like the padding underneath. So like sure. you can hear oh. the puck, like if it's on the ice, you're going to hear it. Yeah. And this kid took a slap shot from the other team. It hit the back of the net. We heard it. And then the buzzer went and the coach from the other team came off on onto the ice and was like, that goal was way behind the buzzer and this and that. I'm like, I could clearly hear the, <laughs> you know, the thing bef- before you're here, but I'm like, but you're yeah. gone. I mean, you're clearly not going to be in this game, but yeah. Um, and, 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 and here's the sad part about that is that coach, you know, maybe he knew what he was, you know, maybe he would truly believe that, but there's a good chance also he knew, but he has to do that theater to keep that job because of the parents, because you have to fight for your team and whatnot. And yeah. it's all theater at that point of what the coaches are arguing. And I, and, and I, and I would pay $20 million when I was officiating to officiate a college or a professional game, as opposed to like 19 new girls, peewee boys, that sort of thing, because the no. parents and the politics in it is so just tough. ridiculous. But mm. speaking of politics, I did want to transition into some St. Cloud state stuff because, oh, okay. you know, you are, I was like, wow, we're taking a turn. All right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't did, did, did take let's... a deep breath there myself. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah. Let's talk about the election. Shall we? So no. <laughs> Biden's infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> For foreign policy. Well, let's talk about Husky policy and your favorite kind of under the radar memories or favorite moments as a Huskies fan since, you know, Ooh. the turn of the century in 2000, everyone sure. loves the Ryan Paling, you know, marquee goal. Are, are there any moments that really stick out to you as, um, you know, maybe mm-hmm. being iconic that are well known, or something that has a personal connection for you, or anything like that? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, uh, you know, some of my favorites, um, you know, that I, you know, that stick out are obviously ones that I was that I was part, of, um, you know, that I was in the stands for. Um, there was one, you know, um, you know. Uh, Gover's um, Huskies game and um, I just remember the atmosphere and I can't exactly remember what year it was um, but uh, Huskies won the first night 5-1 um, Aaron Brocklehurst you know he kicks the puck in the net and won and they end up calling it a goal <laughs> and then just <laughs> the atmosphere in that building and that whole uh, it was just a- absolutely electric. You had, you know, some great, obviously, you know, you had some great players on that team. Um, yeah, you know, you know, you had, you had Lash who kind of had a breakout game and whatnot. And, you know, so, you know, that was, that was really remarkable. And I remember that, you know, the dog pound there, we had confetti um, that we brought in. So we cut up like the like Chronicle, you know, we would cut them up and just sneak in these <laughs> bags of, of, you know, Ziploc bags full of just 
cut up paper in like little squares. And after the goal, we would just absolutely go nuts with it. Obviously, you know, the crowd was packed just everywhere. And, oh man, my was so mad because, you know, obviously we would leave, you know, we wouldn't clean it up, <laughs> but, but it was, <laughs> um, you know, just that. And I, I remember, um, um, you know, all, you know, Brockers comes down the puck is four one at that point, Huskies clear win. Um, and, and he's coming down and he winds up, and he just takes this booming slap shot just outside the blue line and it hits the post loudest ping I've ever heard just echoes throughout the national hockey center, just goes bar down into the net, just place goes absolutely crazy. again. Um, that was probably a moment that was, that kind of sticks out to mind, like at the national hockey center. Um, uh, one of my favorite road trips was, um, you know, uh, first time I went down to Madison uh, for a series and uh, actually that series um, was uh, really unique because this was, you know, kind of in, in that middle area where um, it was on uh, Big Ten Network, but, you know, uh, Wisconsin was still in the WCHA. So um, they would have Big Ten hockey, you know, Big Ten schools and whatnot. So they, that game was on Big Ten Network and Huskies, Huskies um, win um, the first game and um, – uh, that was just absolutely exciting to be a part of because, um, you know, we had this treacherous record at the Kohl Center for the longest time. And um, Wisconsin in the, you know, early and mid 2000s, I mean, they were a powerhouse. They were annoying to play against. They were um, very stout defensively. You know, they had, you know, Elliott and Cole and whatnot. Um, but, you know, even in the early 2000s, we had Stephen Reinprint and Danny Heatley on the same line. Um, yeah, you know, so, you know, St. Cloud went through this huge dry spot in, in where we couldn't buy a game in Madison. Um, and then going to the game, winning, um, uh, winning the first game, uh, just crushing them. And then the second game, um, <laughs> we were, um, <laughs> we, we had a little bit of a different, um, different seat. So, but we were down, uh, kind of where the Huskies shoot twice, like three or four rooms up, uh, and whatnot. And, um, uh, Jared Raby scores the game winning goal to make it two to one, like four minutes left in the third. And, you know, Jared Raby, I mean, what? <laughs> like he was playing forward <laughs> at that time. And, uh, and uh, I don't even know how it went in. So, and I was just, oh, that was just uh, so much fun to be part of. I get absolutely hammered that night at the old fashioned. <laughs> and I ran into um, Dave Overland and Zach fish. And I ran into that while I was just drunk. And I was like, how did that go in? It was rainy. What? And I was just, just chatting with them. And I have no clue what else I said. Um, you know, you know, we were just hopping, you know, old fashioned state street grots and, you know, um, all that there. So, so, yes, so um, um, but October 17th, 2003, does that sound about right in the ballpark for that? Or is that for the Wisconsin two, one victory? I think it was a little bit later. Okay. Cause this is crazy. So it's funny after, after that weekend, the Huskies did not beat Wisconsin until March of 2008. I think that's when it was. Okay. You got a three to two victory on that one. Then sorry. Just cause I was, I was so curious cause we have the record book. So I had to pull it up. And then you were talking that Brocklehurst victory, I'm guessing was 2007. So probably around the same time ish, potentially just yeah. curious. This is yeah. me being a hockey nerd. So sure enough, <laughs> he's, a, he's the stats guy. He's he should just rename his Twitter handle as, you know, what do you call it? Elliot sports, Swing cloud or something like that. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. Pretty nuts. Ru- Russo wannabe. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's Russo slacks. That's what that is. So. Ah, yes. <laughs> no, without, I th- let me check 2000. Maybe it was 2011. Okay. So, so not too far long ago, just a decade. Uh, yeah, just, just, just a decade. No, nope, no, it wasn't 2011. Oh, now this is going to bug me. <laughs> you know, well, Travis, it, well, it's actually fun. Okay. So Nick Dowd was on the team. So that, yeah, that would be more 11 then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be more you recent. Set, you set against Wisconsin, right? Yeah. How about a 4-2 win on February 25th, 2011 in St. Cloud? How does that sound? No. Nope. All right. Oh, two to one uh, in the um, February fourth of two thousand twelve in, in in Madison. There that we go. Right. That's right. the one it was. There you are. You know what's interesting? You actually caught uh, 
after that game, there were only three other games in which the Huskies have played the Badgers since. Yep. They were all in 2012 and 2013. So yep. And again, that goes to my hatred for Wisconsin for not wanting to play little schools. <laughs> I mean, that was the whole Barry Alvarez thing. That's why they wanted to get out of the, to do big 10 uh, hockey because they, they didn't want to keep playing the Michigan techs or the, or the St. Cloud States and whatnot in, you know, losing to us. So sure. suck <laughs> it. Um, but um, yeah, but one of the coolest um, kind of things about that is um, Nick Dowd actually gave me a shout out on Twitter. Um, and that was, um, that was just kind of cool. That was, that, that was the first thing that like actually made me feel like, like I have impact as a fan. You arrived. Game. Yeah. And it's like, and then and it was, I didn't, I didn't tweet about it or anything like that. It was just literally a, you know, you know, and this was my goal well, before I branched off to my Huskies account, but it was like, you know, good to see at well, the beast come out and, you know, support the team, you know, hashtag overtaking the coal, you know? And so it was, it was just really cool. And it was like, wow, that's, you know, obviously that, you know, you know, kind of attest to who uh, Nick Dowd is as, as a person and whatnot. But, you know, just to kind of give uh, just a random thing to shout out, uh, that, w- that, was, uh, that was pretty awesome. So Speaking of Big Ten schools slash Wisconsin Badgers, uh, this exhibition schedule that the Huskies have this upcoming season, I would say is probably some of the most appetizing exhibition schedule we've seen in quite some time because mm-hmm. that those aforementioned Badgers will have, will have a home and home. You'll have a home and home against the Gophers. Um, I believe a home and home with Mankato and then another one again with St. Thomas um, as a fan. And as a person who hates, uh, I guess another team that wears red and is in the state of Wisconsin. Um, what as a fan does this, and I guess it, the reason why I'm asking this question is, with the pandemic and everything else, college hockey, as we, we know, financially is taking a rut. We know Robert Morris as of right now shut down both men's and women's programs essentially out of the blue, mm-hmm. e- even though we all know darn well that the administrators knew this, you know, the numbers were there um, and decided to make an announcement very, very late. Um, but I'm curious as a fan looking at the schedule, does this make your mouth water in the sense of, hey, I got to go up and get tickets to see that game or I got to go take a see that game. I just want to know if like, having these sort of old rivalries back, does that kind of relight a fire of some old stuff you've seen in the past as you're describing this, even just with, uh, with Wisconsin? I think so. I think it's really important for, you know, the older generation of fans. And obviously I cringe when I, when I say that, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 36, so it's not like I'm, you know, decrepit or anything like that, but, you know, having, having that, you know, those familiar names kind of back is important. That's why it's important to have, you know, still those um, people to come in or, you know, to play and whatnot. Um, But I think it's, it's important also to let new rivalries, like let's, let's get involved in it. Let's let them blossom, you know, let's, there's no reason why we can't, you know, have a really good rivalry with um, Omaha or Western Michigan. I mean, I already kind of hate Western Michigan. Um, so it's. Is there anybody uh, you like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not really. <laughs> I mean, I guess Omaha. The only reason I don't, I don't dislike Omaha is just because I see a lot of similarities between the Omaha program where it is now to where the Huskies were. Um, and, um, so I kind of see myself in them maybe a little bit, um, but you know, they're always feel like they're kind of on the precipice, you know, kind of waiting for that one spark to really put them over and and be a contender. Um, but you know, Miami is kind of vanilla to me. So, I mean, that's it. Obviously, you know, North Dakota, I hate Big North Dakota fan, right? So, uh, um, (laughs) obviously the Gophers, I got the other shirt that I was thinking about wearing, you know, is my, my old school. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we're going to have to blur that or we're keeping it. That. We're keeping that one. <laughs> in fact, so. in fact, while you're, while you're here. <laughs> so this was the, this was sold uh, on Facebook to get rid of uh, copyright back when Facebook was just a college. In, in fact, while you're yeah. there, I will read the shirt for, um, for the audio listeners, but maybe show the fans who are watching on the YouTube page, the shirt that you actually have on right now. <laughs> says but what does this do for the pairwise that's a pretty good shirt because <laughs> in the end that's all that matters you know you win you lose you tie it doesn't matter what does it do Math, for the pairwise right? 
<laughs> oh, okay. Didn't affect him. Don't care. Move on to the next game. <laughs> what did what did uh, what did Alaska Anchorage and uh, Lake Superior do for St. Cloud's Fairwise? Maybe even more. Who knows? <laughs> so it's very yeah. fair. I I only have two more questions for you, Travis. And once again, thanks for joining us. My first one uh, actually has to do with social media. Your current account, more clappers. Um, mm-hmm. Where did that Twitter handle come from? Is is there a story behind it, or were you just trying to be a little bit creative? Um, a little bit of a story um, uh, kind of comes from just more and just you know dinosaurs and whatnot, you know more, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> just that whole theme that you know was a thing uh, back in the uh, early you know twenty tens and whatnot and. And I just got so upset. I think it was, it was probably Ryan Suter. And I got so upset with him always feathering shots from the point. And <laughs> I'm just it. like, oh, it's like, no, rip a clapper. Which is, which is, so I'm just like, no, we need more clappers. Like more clappers. <laughs> you know? So that's kind of where the Twitter handle came from. Which is really ironic because, God, I love, I love assists. I love playmakers. Sometimes I love assists way more than I love the goal in a lot of cases. You know, some of my favorite players in Husky hockey history, I mean, are Patrick Newell and uh, Cali Kosala, and just because of what they were able to do with the puck. Um, and, you know, obviously, you know, if you can find Lash on the back door, yeah, he's going to bury it um, because he's got that skill set. But, you know, having the people um, there to kind of dish it out and create space, I think there's just a lot more talent um, kind of to that. But, more passes just doesn't have a ring to it. So just more clappers it is. Ryan Suter is still feathering pucks. Nick, I got one more, but uh, do you have any any other ones to throw in here? Yeah, I have uh, one more for you, Travis, because we did mention uh, before um, you came on the show that, you know, you also are, you know, not just a St. Cloud State fan, but a Minnesota Wild fan as well. Now, I know that, you know, we talked that with uh, some broadcasting, you know, sort of fighting and ways to kind of see it as, you know, maybe weren't able to watch a lot of it. But I kind of want to get your thoughts on the state of the franchise in comparison to 2000. Um, Kirill Kaprizov. Um, one hell of a hockey player. Um, I don't think you need to watch many games to come to that conclusion. Uh, but, you know, when you talk about St. Cloud and where they've kind of risen in, there, there's sort of almost like this parallel paradigm for these for these squads where, you know, back in the 2000s, you have the Jacques Lemaire sort of trap era, and now Minnesota finally getting some skill and speed up front. Uh, does this Minnesota wild sort of trajectory mimic anything that St. Cloud State has done in recent years? We got a Craig Dahl mouse pad, just to you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. What was the last part of the question? <laughs> uh, like seeing St. Cloud and how it's kind of risen and, you know, how they built the program speed and skill. Mm-hmm. Uh, Minnesota Wild kind of doing the same thing as, as more recently with Kaprizov, Fiala. Uh, do you see kind of like some simulators between those two franchises rise in recent years? You know, if you were to call it per se. I, I hope so. Um, you know, and that's, that's just so frustrating, especially hearing some of the reports and rumors coming out with Kaprizov right now. Um, and you know, kind of where they're at with talks it's like, he's a guy that sells Jersey and puts butts in the seats. You got to do everything you can to make him happy and, and whatnot. And, you know, the wild right now, I think are just have always, you know, you, you know, ever since really, even they signed Parisian suitor. Um, have kind of been in this weird purgatory where they just haven't been quite good enough to get out of really get out of the divisional playoffs and whatnot. You know, they were stuck behind the Blackhawks for how many years and, and, and whatnot, you know, obviously not to say that it was a bad, bad move because I, I don't think it was. And there's, you know, I, you know, just, you just kind of felt that it would kind of go this way eventually. Um, especially with, um, uh, with, with Parisi, but it's, uh, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep them and you gotta keep Kaprizov happy. And, you know, you know, I kind of saw what happened after, you know, Marion Gabrick left and, you know, you, you had that little lull because you didn't have, you didn't have people to put the puck in the net. And that's in the end, that still is the name of the game. So. 
Um, just a quick follow up on that, Travis, too. I, I know I've seen the reports too, and we, we've kind of dived into that last mm -hmm. week um, yeah. on those reports. Uh, I guess, uh, how confident are you that the Wild will get a deal done with Kaprizov? And uh, I guess if that means sacrificing potentially a Fiala or an Eric Sinek, if that's what it takes, if, the, if we're those two names that demand more money, which one of those two are you putting on the trade block? It's, you know, really anyone that you get the best return for. You know, I'm a bit, I'm a, I am a believer that nobody is tradable. I mean, Gretzky was traded um, or nobody's untradable. Um, so <laughs> no trades, Chuck Fletcher. No, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> for a third round pick and, you know, get, you know, trade away a pick, yeah, yeah. trade away a pick that, you know, eventually became Braden Point. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyway. Why, why is he having a good playoffs? Yeah, yeah. How's he doing? <laughs> Never heard of him. Is he okay? <laughs> um, is he good? Did he break it? And um, <laughs> it's – so it's I – mean, I mean, that's always tough. And, again, you know, that's – that. those are for de decisions for people who, you know, know a lot more about the ins and outs than I do. But in the bottom line is that they're, they're – it's a playmaker that you haven't had since Gabbard. And you've been – sorely missing that and it's these two-way you know good locker room guys that is as uh, as kind of caused the, the franchise i think to kind of keep just spinning its wheels and that's where that's where i feel that you know you know you finally hit on a draft pick for crying out loud and you you got you got to do everything you can to keep them because you came in and saw you, you saw what he can do Speaking of uh, a group that uh, didn't really spin their wheels and finally gained some traction this year, this is my final question. The St. Claude State Huskies, uh, runner-up in the national championship game for the men's team this year. What were you, what was your impressions of this team? Uh, have they vindicated anything a little bit from that, of course, that 2018-19 uh, group? And uh, beyond that, uh, what does the future look like for this St. Cloud group? It's always tough when you're talking about vindicated for just so many years of disappointment <laughs> um, of just going fetal and crying after another, you know, I was, you know, I was there for, you know, fair state and whatnot. And, you know, Jim, Jimmy Schultz missed hip check that, you know, and Lindgren's big rebound out in the slot and, you know, just overall how the defense played that game, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it was a huge weight off the shoulders, especially to see that semifinal game with, you know, Mankato really for both programs, you know, to have deep runs. Um, and it, it, it was so great to see. And, you know, I'm very much like you can't really put the sins of the past on the current team because college hockey is so different. I mean, there's so much turnover and there's just so much, um, going on. I think fans can kind of harbor that a little bit too much and we can become a little bit more, you know, jaded um, when it comes to it. And it's, you know, this team, especially I'm seeing, you know, I'm obviously loving what Brett Larson is doing. And when I say that is I feel like everyone is playing better, more cohesive as a team. I felt like Motzko would have lines and then sometimes, you know, the defense, you know, would kind of, they, they wouldn't always be on the same page and they wouldn't be congruent. And throughout this last year, I didn't see hardly any instances where, you know, they weren't on the same page. Yeah. The fence will make some mistakes and whatnot, and that'll happen. Um, but I feel like just the cohesiveness and, you know, the team aspect and everybody kind of in the right seat of the bus. And it's just been so much fun to, to, to watch over this last year. And I thought we were about a year behind. You know, I thought this would be, I didn't, I, I didn't want to say a rebuilding year, but I thought we were going to be, you know, kind of, you know, middle of the pack, you know, maybe we'll get a spot, maybe we won't, but I didn't have my sights as high. Um, and then to see, you know, that we were always, you know, just the good talent that we've um, had and playing as a team and whatnot. And obviously, you know, with um, players, you know, stepping up and Okabe, you know, and, um, you know, can kind of go down the list, obviously. But it's been, you know, we're, we're a lot, you know, let, you know, I were a day or a year out. I thought maybe two years out from really becoming, you know, back to the top and to have the year last year, I'm, 
I'm, I'm excited for this year, but you know, to tell you the truth, I'm a little bit nervous just because of how college hockey has this free agency type period where everybody else was able to kind of pick up pieces that they know that they were missing. And Brett Larson was in a pickle. He was in kind of this spot where it's like, Hey, we can either get, you know, you know, like why mess with a good thing? I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, you can't make that many changes. And in the end, he did the right thing by saying, Hey, if you want to stay, let's stay, you know, let's, let's, let's do this. Um, so, you know, having essentially the same team come back, um, you know, obviously, you know, we'll have a, a couple new faces in there, you know, with everybody else kind of elevating too with new talent, you know, I, I think we're going to come out of the gate strong because we're going to still have that cohesiveness, but you know, games get a lot tougher to win. And, um, as the season goes on, so we'll kind of see, so I'm a little bit nervous, but even if this season does kind of underwhelm, I'm still really excited. I think, you know, of, uh, the future and getting, you know, Brent Larson, that, um, extension as well. I'm definitely well-deserved and, um, whatnot. So it's, you know, I don't know. I'm a little more tepid about this next season than I know a lot of Huskies fans are. Uh, but it's, you know, either way, I'm going to enjoy the ride. And, you know, Nick, as you said earlier, just this, this non-conference schedule, it's going to be, it's going to be a blast. So if we can get out there and, you know, support the team, um, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to have uh, people back. So, so get your shots and, and whatnot and get, let's, let's get everybody back on and into a full arena. So. Yeah, it's going to be a fresh new slate. Of course, St. Cloud State Huskies, uh, just like this podcast, number one in your hearts, number one on the score sheet, right? Uh, Travis, we thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a pleasure. Uh, an interesting caveat here before we let you go. Um, Travis, we've, uh, I guess, it's, this isn't uncommon for our guests, but I guess even on top of that, like we didn't even know who you were before this week and we just kind of reached out to you and you were able to come on the show. So I guess I got to ask, have you, have you, wow. enjoyed, have we you didn't en- even know who you I, were. I mean, we knew, we knew who your cool. Twitter handle was, but we didn't know who you were. I, I should <laughs> say, have oh, you, have, okay. have this you is why I usually host. So he, don't, I don't say stupid stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> My question <laughs> was <laughs> story. I'm unfollowing you. <laughs> <laughs> my Hashtag question was Noah. <laughs> <laughs> my question was have you enjoyed your time on the show and should we even air this thing now knowing how much you hate us <laughs> <laughs> right exactly us uh, plural no it's just you yeah. <laughs> um oh no, yeah definitely it's you know thanks for um having me on you know when you when you said that it's actually kind of funny because you know my wife was um talking about how it's like yeah you really need that you know kind of hockey outlet and whatnot Mm -hmm. and um i kind of get that pent up a little bit um and sometimes you know uh tweets and whatnot aren't aren't exactly enough or they don't get the point across or whatnot i I don't i don't know the hashtag fire hacks all one was pretty direct today (laughs) (laughs) well i mean that that uh that comes from you know just everything just blame hacks all i mean (laughs) that that's what north dakota did i mean going to all those frozen fours and it was still all fire hacks and it's like wow well i'm, I'm sure i'm sure he'll hire ben blood as director of fighting yep there we go exactly <laughs> um well, yeah but what, once again travis uh we thank you so much uh, for coming on the show uh, we wish you the best of luck in your upcoming week and uh hopefully we'll see you soon yep yeah thanks for having me appreciate it thanks everybody take care thanks, travis Once again, Nick, always a blast to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a different guest. I know we have a lot of players on, a lot of coaches, you know, a lot of people that play the game. Sometimes it's nice to get that fan perspective and kind of see, uh, one, how they see things. But two, uh, like you mentioned in the pre-show, how knowledgeable some of these guests are, uh, you, you know, have coming in on the show. And we don't really give them a whole lot of information sometimes. So to see how articulate they are, you can tell that they're way more intelligent than we could ever be, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Uh, I speak for myself, not for you, but uh, <laughs> on that, on that note, uh, what we do know is he sees red, meaning he apparently hates the Wisconsin Badgers. Well, the one thing he did mention, Noah, that I think was, uh, I think I'll just retouch in real quick is, you know, he talked about some of those glory days, um, again, of being uh, inside the dock pound inside the Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. And the other reason why I want to say that again, because I really do think that this year, and, and again, he's a little bit more reserved in his excitement per se, but I, myself, I'm excited for this upcoming season more. So 
I just want to see fans back inside that building. I want to see, and more so hear how loud that building can be. And I really do think that with the exhibition schedule and certainly with the roster, this team is going to have a lot of it coming back. There's a lot of reasons to go out to the Herb Rex National Hockey Center and see a game. So, and to kind of hear some of those stories back from the old WCHA, uh, it's sort of uh, St. Clos State glory days, you could say for fans. Uh, I, I would love to be able to experience that now. And I think there's a lot of um, appetizing uh, meat on the table for fans to go out and chew at for this upcoming year. Speaking of things to chew on, Nick, we got a couple of things coming up uh, in regards to our show. Look at this. I'm just rolling with the whole segue What's thing. What's going on, man? I, I don't know. Must add a little bit of some schnapps before I came on the show. But nonetheless, of course, if you're listening to this, you're listening to this on Friday, June 25th or later. Uh, coming up on June 27th, of course, on Sunday, our NCHC preview coverage continues with everyone's favorite. Uh, the North Dakota Fighting Hawks are going to be on the docket. We're going to touch on them here on Sunday. Uh, ben Holden is tentatively scheduled to make his return uh, next week as a guest on the show to talk about what he's been up to and some really exciting things there provided uh, from what we learned uh, if his computer works <laughs> we'll have to see if he can uh, he, he can have his technical difficulties figured out he was having some trouble the other day but we trust him he'll be in he'll be on the docket for sure at some point here then the following week as we move into uh, the first week of July uh, it's going to be the Duluth Bulldogs that are going to round out the NCHC opponents followed by Bruce Siski uh, who's going to be a guest on our show of course uh, Duluth media coverage extraordinaire uh, and you won't want to miss it but of course episode 67 is coming up in just a couple of days here on Sunday and that will do it tonight for the Huskies Warming House Podcast. And your one-timer come in, they score! Ripped in! A bomb from Perrix! So Dana Rasmussen fires and she scores! Dana Rasmussen for the Huskies along in for a chance to win it, he scores! Kirill, the thrill is for real! Welcome to the NHL, a game-winner! St. Cloud Cathedral is now 42.6 seconds away from wrapping up the school's first ever title.